Oklahoma cattlemen are all too familiar with these tiny arachnids. However, these USDA and OSU researchers are studying ticks that haven't been seen in Oklahoma for a very long time. Tim Probst is a researcher with the USDA and the Oklahoma Water Resource Center. Uh, the cattle fever tick eradication program actually started in 1906. And there are two species of tick, the, the southern cattle tick and the cattle fever tick, that carry a protozoa that's actually a blood parasite. And that causes anemia and a bunch of other complications. And actually in, in naive animals that have never been exposed before, there's a 70 to 90% mortality rate. Um, so it's actually, um, some literature shows that it's like the uh, most financially significant ectoparasite to cattle in the whole world. In the 1920s and 30s, the U.S. implemented cattle dipping programs to combat the bacteria-carrying ticks. The project eradicated virtually all of the problematic ticks from the southern United States, but colonies along the U.S.-Mexico border and in Puerto Rico are causing problems to this day. Because of these efforts, they were able to eradicate it from the southern U.S., but because the animals, the ticks themselves, are still existence in those southern areas outside of the U.S., strays can come across and they carry the animals with them. One female will lay up to 4,000 eggs. It's really hard to con control that. That's why, you know, even after 100 years or, or more, that we still have the program going on. The USDA Ag Research Service and the Oklahoma Water Resource Center, with the help of OSU, are seeking to streamline the process of tracking and treating animals affected by the cattle tick. And they're doing it with RFID chips and readers, technology that is probably in your wallet right now. So what we've developed is a survey that works with off-the-shelf uh, devices that currently scan the RFID tags to get their number and gets their weights from the squeeze shoot themselves. Soon, the same technology used in your credit cards will be used by researchers in Texas and Puerto Rico to monitor tick activity in buffer zones. So we've tied those devices together, allowing the survey to be manually entered and fill out all the metadata, and it can be stored in the cloud and viewed by researchers almost instantaneously after it's submitted. Uh, the ARS researchers, uh, their old method was to count the ticks by hand, which is always going to be by hand, and they have to write the number of ticks on the butt of the animal. Then the animal goes through the squeeze, and they weigh it manually, and they have to look at a chart that has the weight of the animal and the approximate number of ticks that are on the animal, and that will give them the dosage for that animal. So that is a very messy way to do it, because you have to worry about handwriting, incorrect accuracies, it getting rubbed off before they get there. So what this does is reduce the number of data inputs and data touches that the user has to do, and it overall increases the efficiency and accuracy of the test. The Cattle Fever Tick Eradication Program is yet another example of the continued relationship between the USDA and OSU and their shared mission to improve the security of the agricultural industry. It's just a matter of finding all the pieces that are necessary to make a project successful and produce something that's useful for folks out in the state. And sometimes we'll have uh, those pieces, whether it be personnel or, or physical resources like livestock and land here at Oklahoma State. And sometimes the Ag Research Services groups have it, have those resources and we can combine them in a synergistic way to help uh, produce beneficial information for people out there in the livestock industry. You know, uh, a live animal demo of it w was huge and really helped us see all these things go from basically the, the lab or the, you know, the computer to actual animals. So it's, the partnership has been a huge part of, of what we've been able to accomplish. For SUNUP, I'm Seth Fish.